Perfect. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Navin Peary. I'm working with our lead victim planner, Sandy Dixon, and we're going to do an overview of some pre-award requirements this morning. Um, these will be things that you will need to keep in mind as you're going through the uh, application process, as you're completing your application, as you're filling out the information and all that good stuff. So we're going to begin now. The overview, we're going to give you a brief overview of the planning section. We're going to talk about some of the pre-award requirements, show you some points regarding the project budget and allowable costs, and then devote a few minutes to matching funds and review changes to indirect costs. As you can see by this slide, the planning section is divided into three groups of staff. This staff works with procuring these funds lists that come into the state of North Carolina. The staff also works with the three standing committees by the same name, and these are derived um, by members of the current crime commission. On April 4th, 2022, the unique Entity identifier or UEI used across the federal government changed from the DUNS number to the unique entity ID, which again we're referring to as UEI, and this is generated by SAM.gov. As part of this transition, the DUNS number has been removed from SAM.gov. Entity registration, searching, and data entry in SAM.gov now require the use of this new UEI. Existing regist registered entities can find the UEI by logging into SAM.gov. In your workspace, select the entity title of the entity widgets. The UEI is shown beside the entities. New entities can get their UEI at SAM.gov and, if required, complete an entity registration. Please note that GCC staff cannot assist you with the UEI system as this system is federally managed. Good morning, everybody. I'm Sandy Dixon, Lead Crime Victim Services Planner. I want to stop my video just so I can maintain the bandwidth on my computer. So here on this slide, we'll give you an overview of the steps that you need to take uh, to prior to starting your application. However, Kevin Farrell will go into more detail and demonstrate this information later today. First, you will need an NCID and you'll need to go to either my NCID or NCID very close in name. But depending on whether or not you are an individual outside of state government or an existing state employee. Then you will need to access the GCC Grants Management Platform, EBS, in order to create or review an application or to manage or review an existing awarded grant. You will need to use Google Chrome to access the online EBS external access request form, if this is your first time. Provide the details required by the form and submit it. Your authorization for access should be processed over the next 48 business hours. If approved, you will receive a welcome to the GCC Enterprise Business System email. This email will come from the email address sapact at ncdot.gov. And please check to ensure that this has not gone to your spam folder. This next section will give you some basic instructions and helpful tips as you're completing the budget section of your application. So let's talk about budget lines. Generally speaking, all budget lines must be described in the narrative. You want to include the name of the item or the position. Give us a general description about how the item or the position supports your project. And provide us the percent of time or value that is charged to the project. A great example is here. Victim advocate number one will dedicate 50% of their FTE hours to serving this project by and explain. Note that EBS now contains a field inside of each budget line called the detailed description as shown in the red circle. Here in the detailed, described, detailed description field, show your calculations. For example, for lodging, show the number of travelers times the number of nights times the cost per night. 
Another example would be to provide the employee's full salary times the percentage of time spent on the project, showing how you got the salary amount for that position. Also here, enter any additional details to describe the item that may not have fit in the actual narrative section of the application. This is important. What we often see is that subrecipients will enter a budget line name and that's all, and staff may not understand what that budget line is, such as a magnometer. Staff may need additional details about, about what a magnometer is, why it's necessary to the project, and what portion or percentage of this item is being paid for by the grant. Please put this detailed information here. This will save you a lot of work later if your project is funded. If you don't put this information here, staff will be required to get these details later, and that will require more work for you later and will slow down the award process. Now we'll take a deeper dive into all of our budget categories. One budget category is personnel. There must be a reasonable and documented methodology for allocating the work performed through an internal system of controls and timekeeping. For instance, where employees work on multiple activities, cost objectives, or projects or programs, a distribution of their salaries or wages must be supported by time and activity reports, which meet GCC standards for documenting their hours worked on the project by funding source. Please also note that an executive director's time cannot be charged 100% to a single GCC project, nor in total to multiple GCC project, projects. Some items that will go into your personnel section will include salary and wages and fringe benefits. Keep in mind that fringe benefits are allowable as long as they are reasonable, and the fringe benefits listed in your proposal should apply to the personnel listed on the application that will be involved in this project. Here we have provided you the definition of allowable travel costs. Be sure to describe how the travel benefits the project. Use your travel policy for reimbursement rates and show these calculations in that budget line detailed description field. The travel policy must be provided in the organization profile in EBS. If you do not have a travel policy, you may use the state's travel policy, which can be found at the link included here for the North Carolina Office of State Budget and Management's budget manual. Maintain documentation for all of the project funded travel to include things like mileage logs, hotel, airfare, and registration receipts that are reimbursed to employees. If you're requesting travel expenses, and I do want to emphasize the word if on this category, please keep some of these items in mind. Please note that the purpose of this grant application is to help implement, implement a project or a program and not to be used as a travel fund. Travel for relevant and necessary aspects of the program are allowed, but please make sure that you do calculate these items carefully. You must be able to show the number of persons traveling, where they're traveling to, the purpose of that travel, a clear and itemized budget on the lodging costs, per diem costs, mileage, airfare, baggage, and any ground expenses. This is a category that will be scrutinized heavily and in many cases, if there's a need to reduce the amount of a grant in order to be able to fund it, this will be one of the first areas that will be asked to be reduced. For equipment, there's a change from prior years to this category. Equipment is now categorized as items costing $10,000 or more per item or unit. Have and use a purchasing or procurement policy for your agency. This policy also must be provided in the organization profile in EBS. Maintain all documentation for all purchases from the beginning of the bidding process on through to invoicing and payment. Additionally, GCC requires equipment be tracked and documented on an equipment inventory worksheet. 
Here is an example of the equipment line item. Note that the cost per unit is greater than $10,000. Therefore, these items qualify for this budget category. Do not put these types of items in the supply budget category. Supplies are any items under $10,000 per unit and include things such as general office supplies as well as program supplies. General office supplies can be listed as one line item, but be sure to attach a detailed office supply list to your project. Program supplies should be listed separately from general office supplies, and a detailed program supply list should also be attached to your project. Equipment le lease agreements, where you have not purchased the item, but instead you are leasing the piece of equipment should also be listed here. So let's review that again. Purchased equipment, $10,000 or more, goes in the equipment budget category. But if you are leasing it, the equipment lease agreement item should be listed here. This is an example of how supply items should be placed in the detailed description field for this line in EBS. It, it should show the quantity, and the unit cost for each item that is being requested in the budget. For this cycle, you will see in EBS, a budget category called operating expenses. Please place your rent and utilities budget lines here. Also, be sure to upload your rent agreements to the project. For conferences, which your agency will hold and are supported by the GCC grant project, please be aware that conference food and beverages are generally not allowable. Maintain similar documentation for conferences as you would for other travel costs. Lists of attendees are also required to be maintained by your organization. All conference costs must be pre-approved by your GCC grant administrator prior to incurring the actual costs. If you're budgeting for a conference, keep in mind that these are the federal limits that are set for these items. The federal government sets these limits and they're based on how much could be allocated per attendee. Food and beverages are not allowed. Now we will move on to discussing match. This section will explain GCC's match funding requirements, how to calculate the re required amount of match funds, and how to request a match waiver if you are not able to meet the match requirements. Match, is the, match funding is the portion of a project's costs not supported by the federal funds. Match funds must come from other non-federal sources. Match demonstrates strong non-federal basis of financial and partner support for a project and is subject to the same regulations and restrictions as the federal funding. GCC grants only fund the federal share of your total project costs. The federal share in most cases makes up 75 to 80% of the total project budget awarded. The remaining 20 to 25% of your project costs is called the match share and can be contributed by the applicant through cash or in-kind sources. Applicants must be able to cover the match portion prior to receiving the federal funds and match contributions may only be applied to one federally funded project. You may not use the same match for multiple projects since this would be considered double dipping. GCC match requirements are specific to the federal funding source. Different federal funding sources have different match requirements and some federal funding sources may not require match at all. Applicants should always read and review the appropriate GCC RFA, the request for applications, 
for each specific funding source's match requirements. Match requirement and any exceptions to the match requirement will be specified in the RFA. Applicants will also find in the RFA instructions about how to request a match waiver if they are not able to meet the match requirement. At a minimum, GCC will consider practical and logical obstacles to providing match. Again, more detail can be found in each RFA and another important reason for reading the RFAs. So let's move to talking about how to calculate the required match amounts. Here's an example to help you understand the match requirement. Let's say that you are compiling a budget for your proposed project. Your total project costs add up to a total of $1 million, and you know you have a 20% match rate. That means GCC will give you only $800,000, and you will need to find non-federal sources in the amount of $200,000 for the match share. When added to the $800,000 in a federal share, this will equal $1 million in total project costs. A match calculator can be found at the link listed here in red. It is a helpful resource when determining or checking your total project budget's federal share and match share for accuracy. Based on your percent match requirement of 20% or 25%, choose the method of calculation. In example one, you may know the federal share that you will need from GCC, and you need to know the corresponding match amount you will have to provide. In example two, you know the total project budget and want to know how much of the total budget that you will need to provide as the match share. Simply enter the dollar amounts in the orange field and press the calculate button, depending on which situation you are trying to determine. Let's look at acceptable forms of match. The most common is a cash match. This form of match could come from a grantee's own funds, cash donations from third parties, such as a fundraising event, which generates unrestricted cash for your agency, foundation grants, or grants from other non-federal government agencies, to name a few examples. Another form of match is in-kind match, or non-cash donations to the project. It is the in-kind value of these contributions that is the match. Note that in-kind match does not require your, does require, I'm sorry. Note that in-kind match does not require your agency to make a cash payment for the contribution. Some examples of in-kind match include the fair market value of property, services that are donated by local professionals, volunteers providing services for the project, and others. As you work to identify and secure your match, remember that each match item must be properly valued and documented the same way as all other budget lines. In-kind match requires the fair market assessment and may be a bit more complicated. For example, for property, the fair market value must be established by an independent appraiser. The value of services by consultants or other personnel must be consistent with what the grantee would pay their own staff for similar work or with the local market value for the work performed. Time contributed by volunteers must be valued for the actual work performed as well. So to summarize, Match funding is the portion of a project not supported or paid for by the federal funding source. Match may or may not be required depending on the funding source to which you have applied, so read the GCC RFAs carefully. Additionally, Match demonstrates a strong base of non-federal financial and partner support. Match is always, always subject to the same regulations and restrictions as the federal funds that you receive from GCC. Depending on the federal funding sources, cash and or in-kind contributions may be allowed as a form of match. And finally, if you cannot provide the match amount, 
you must request a match waiver at the time of application. So now we'll go through two types of indirect costs. There's the de minimis indirect cost rate, and there's also a federally negotiated indirect cost rate, also known as the NICRA, N-I-C-R-A. The de minimis indirect cost rate. Some recipients have an option of using a de minimis indirect cost rate set by law. The de minimis rate is 15% of the modified total direct costs. Please note that this has changed from 10% to 15%. The MDTDC base includes salary and wages, fringe benefits, materials and supplies, services, travel, and the first $50,000 of each contract. Excluded from the MTDC calculation is equipment, capital expenditures, charges for patient care, tuition remission, rental costs, scholarships, and the portion of any contracts in excess of $50,000. The de minimis rate is available without the need to negotiate with the cognizant federal agency for indirect costs. The de minimis rate is an option only for recipients that do not have an approved federally negotiated indirect cost rate. When the de minimis rate is used, costs must be consistently charged as either indirect or direct cost. Double charging is not permitted. If you elect to use de minimis, it must be applied consistently across all your agency's federally funded projects unless or until your agency receives a federally negotiated indirect cost rate. If you elect to use de minimis in your projects, you must submit and upload a certification to the organized organization documents. The de minimis certification form can be found at the grant form section of our website. Applicants that intend to charge indirect cost rate through the use of federally negotiated indirect cost rates must have a current signed federally approved indirect cost rate agreement, which the agency will then use for all applications for federal funding. The cognizant federal agency is the federal agency from which the subrecipient receives the most funds. Note this is the subrecipient, such as a county or state agency, and not the implementing agency, such as the sheriff's office. Documentation supporting the agency's use of an indirect cost rate is required. You will upload the NICRA to the organizational documents in EBS. Since utilizing an indirect cost rate occurs at the organizational level, the financial officer is responsible for the verification of an organization's indirect cost rate, whether it's de minimis or the federally negotiated rate. If an organization is utilizing an indirect cost rate, the required supporting documentation must be uploaded to the EBS grants management platform by the financial officer. Oops. Sandy, I think we muted. You got muted. Thank you. We have reviewed thus far the GCC committees and staff responsible for the application questions. We've gone through our budget categories and all of the details required for each budget line. We've discussed match and remember it may or may not be required by the funding source. So read that RFA and we've discussed indirect cost changes. So we, we both want to thank you for your time and your attention this morning. Please enter your questions into the chat and all questions will be consolidated into an FAQ document and posted to our website. Thank you all very much and have a good day.